This is going to be a short tutorial on how to put dots on a map and how to connect those dots with lines. It's based on Chapter 8, Visualizing Special Relationships. Um, today is Monday, November 10th, 2014, uh, Info Design class at San Francisco State. So there is a more complex one with, with, with the bubbles are actually different sizes, but we're just going to do the simple one with just the dots are the same size, and that is with the Costco locations on the United States. Um, so if you went to that page, you would find all the files that you need to um, get. Okay, uh, There's a, a file that has the data set of the, um, comma separate, uh, probably this one, and then one with the lines. Um, okay, so go ahead and download. Um, Anyway, there's a page also with the exercise, and this is what we're going to try to achieve. Uh, putting dots on the map of the United States, Costco locations, uh, and then uh, a, sim a very simple exercise, how to connect uh, lines, um, connect, put connecting lines, which um, I'm going to quickly show it now, and I'll show it better later, but with that simple geographic kind of information, you can actually rig a, a different type of file, which could be something like this, which is really a scatter plot with a line that weaves, you know, back and forth, and you would just change your data um, to be able to output uh, this information. In this case, is the uh, 2014 midterm election uh, the swings in the Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, so we'll get back to that, but I think this is one of the most effective lines. It's called a Gantt chart in Tableau, but um, it really is a scatter plot. Uh, and the difference here is that your X and your Y here become your longitude, yeah, and latitude in the uh, in a map, in a real map. Uh, so in I learned there is also a PDF of step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Okay, which is this one. And so if you open that, um, we can go and do all the steps. There is also a, um, you can also get the chapter of the book from this, this is taken from. And let's see if we can find that. Um, yeah, chapter eight, visualize this. We'll go quickly over it. Um, it talks about how a map can become very personal because, of course, everybody looks for their own particular spot on a map, whether it's their house or whether they did something or what the place they need to go. And um, and we won't get on onto all the details, but uh, what you need is data that defines what that position is. And usually this is latitude and longitude data. And just to, again, remember to repeat once more, Longitude, which I would put first in this list, um, is actually going left to right or east to west, okay, traditionally. And latitude is going north to south. So distances from the equator are plus or minus north and south, and distances from Greenwich, um, what is it called, the zero par uh, meridian, is the... Uh, uh, west and east and for a very long time longitude it was really hard to determine if you were at sea because they didn't have clocks that were uh, good enough to keep time um, whereas latitude was easily found with the position of the stars which doesn't change um, so it, the chapter goes through a lot of places where you can get um, geocoded information um, in R, we're just going to install a little package called Maps, and the maps are actually not too bad, but they're really mostly useful for getting something going, and then it's best to replace them with um, uh, with a good SVG map uh, that you can find, for example, in Wiki Wikimedia or Wikimedia Commons, something like that. Um, the dots are going to be symbols in R, and uh, let's see, eventually we'll be able to change the color of the dots and also um, 
in this case it's showing the entire world map but we have the ability to just show maybe just the US map maybe just California and the other day we tried to uh, plot just San Francisco but um, even though we couldn't get a San Francisco map we could still plot micro data so to speak of longitude and latitude within it. Uh, different neighborhoods. So it's still possible to plot the data. We just have to zoom in. Uh, when we get our map, we'll delete the parts that we don't need. In this case, uh, I'm not sure what that is. Montana, maybe? Uh, and then uh, we'll do this variation again, which is putting connecting lines between the different dots. Okay. Um, let's close that. And let's go to the PDF. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, so go ahead and in art, uh, I would say just simply cut and paste the entire uh, code. That's probably going to be the simplest thing. Uh, so the file is um, yeah, this one called Costco's map with dots, uh, dot r. It may be slightly different names, but um, so so what I did, I cut and paste that file went to um, our studio right here. I'm gonna enlarge a little bit. For some reason, the map is really tiny in the window, even though the window is quite big. The plot window. Um, So let me just go over the f the, the the file, the R code, and it has all the um, annotations, the comments. So we'll have to uh, install the um, sorry the Max the Maps package, uh, which if you don't have, you have to get uh, go a little smaller here. Um, once we do that, we're going to bring in the file, and this was my old path to that file, so I had to update it so that in my desktop I, um, I have the right path. Or you could simply import the data set, right, as usual, like we did here from text file. Um, and let's see, somewhere we have. State and see symbol USA. Hmm. Somehow the map command is after the symbols, but I guess it works anyway. Um, so we'll put the symbols on the um, on the United States. Why don't we just go ahead and do it instead of repeating this more than necessary? Um, plot region to large. Interesting. Okay, um, so go ahead and make sure you have your um, your maps maps plural uh, plot uh, turned on. So it's right here. Okay, this one called maps. And if you don't have it, just um, install uh, maps. Okay, just find, uh, interesting, not finding it. Hmm. Well, maybe because I already have it. Yeah. You guys having trouble installing maps? Should be pretty easy, right? If you're doing it. Um, so install maps. Um, and then let's just test it. So, map database, I'm not sure what this is, let me just run it, oh, for whatever reason, the map of the United States is called state, I guess it's a short way to just say states of the United States, um, anyway, that will generate the, uh, the, um, the map and let's uh, let's actually quickly look because this map is not going to be very detailed. 
uh, once again, if you go to a place like Wikimedia Commons, you can download beautiful SVG maps um, that you can then replace in Illustrator. So this one, oops, it's opening it in Illustrator. I wanted to open it in the browser, but it doesn't matter. Um, let's just see. Yeah, there we go. So this is every county in the United States, and each one of these paths is going to be a, um, uh, a path, I believe, a, a closed path, yeah, so that you can then fill it uh, if needed. Uh, but that same map, let's see if we open it, if you go to a website, it will look like a, just a web page, but... Um, Yeah. yeah, and when you find it, oops, uh, all these icons are different. Okay, uh, yeah, it will just look like this, and you can just do a save as, right? Save page as, and you'll get the file, which happens to be an SVG file. And if I were to look at the Oh boy, the folks at Apple think that getting rid of everything that's possibly humanly possible is a great thing. But I want to know what my menu says. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so if you go to develop and you look at the page source, um, if we can, yeah. You will see that basically the file is just a, a huge list of uh, paths which have all kinds of information going to point A to point B, etc., etc. It's actually an XML file, I believe. Um, and in here, somewhere, there is also, I think, uh, zip code information. So that should allow you to do, you know, for example, when you want to color each particular county. Um, Anyway, a long story to say that the maps in R are okay, but they're not great to do your final. So um, if you're lucky to have the same type of projection, you can then replace uh, at the end uh, with a better map. Anyway, that generates, st the state command generates the United States map. Now I'm going to import my Costco's geocoded as CSV, yeah, it's a slightly different name. And I can look at it. It's this one. So it's basically an address for each Costco, each state, each city, a zip code, and then a latitude and a longitude. And sometimes funny stuff happens where like the dots will be like in the right place on the map and you might even be able to notice immediately and say, okay, something is wrong. But obviously, between this file of the Costco information and that file of the map that R already has, there is some correspondence, right? Otherwise, it would just would be weird and it wouldn't work. Um, uh, so now we can, with this command, we can view what the data is again. But let's go back to the code and let's just do line by line so that the symbols yeah here we go so the yeah so you can see the first by default is the X which is the longitude running across from left to right east to west or west to east or whatever um, the second is up and down north and south vertically uh, it's going to put a circle according to this one I don't quite understand but and did you understand why the circles the position for the circle is the length so every single based on longitude uh, I'm not sure anyway it works and then the size and to add them to the existing map okay uh, 
So this particular command here just makes a map a little lighter. This is the color for the lines of the map. So if we do it, it's going to give us a, um, a gray map or a gray line map. It's kind of nice. So we did the same thing. Now we put dots on that map and it's broken down in lines so it's easier to see. Remember how you need two attributes for each uh, graphic shape. So a background and a foreground. Uh, let's see what this gives us. There we go. Okay, so in this case we got a red background and a um, and a white line. Um, uh, so pretty simple and looks like it's pretty correct because it looks like the east and the west coast is where most of the stores are. Um, so you know, don't forget to look at your, you know, at what you're getting, right? And kind of use your brain and say, oh, does this make sense? And not just take what comes out. All right, so let's see what this is going to do. Uh, oh, in this case, it's the world. Okay, so the map from the database, the one called world, does indeed show the world. And by the way, always get rid of Antarctica because there's nothing there, right? Unless you're doing something on Antarctica, it's this, it's quite skewed too. Antarctica is not that big. Um, although this map is pretty good, it's not as distorted at the top here. Uh, so Greenland is not, it's still much, much smaller than Canada, but uh, it doesn't look too bad. Um, so now we're going to put the same dots, the same Costco dots on this world map. Of course, they're going to be all in that particular area. So uh, you could, in theory, enlarge this and we just mess with it but right now we're just going to uh, focus on a particular uh, series of regions California, Nevada, Oregon and Washington so we're going to start from scratch again uh, and we're going to put the symbols on that And we're going to put also text for each particular city, right? So that's the third the third element here, the third uh, attribute. Uh, did, it, did it do it? Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, that took a little time. Um, it's going to look like crap on the screen, but you get it. Um, Uh, let's go back before the text actually and no yeah now it's actually adding it over and over okay um, so even though we told him only four states it's putting data right here which actually belongs to some other state but you can just delete that part later on um, Okay, so now I'm going to bring in a different uh, data set and actually let's just quickly look at it. Um, the fake trace text looks like that. Very, very simple and I took it from the book and uh, I think I made it up. I might have changed it a little bit but, but I gave a name to each stop so I just call them stop one, stop two, stop three. So if we were to um, very quickly, if you went, to, if you were to like set up a file to do uh, that election uh, chart, which is this one, that step one, step two, stop two, one, stop two, and stop three would be the years in this case. All right, and then you just need the coordinates of where these points are and you would have to build it up of course I'm not sure how it's done here but you, it's pretty easy right so it's a it's an X location right along these axes the Y location here is not defined because you the, the years are what's done so what what I'm sure they've done is they've just numbered them maybe one two three four um, 
and so that leaves a little space between each line, right? So that you get a slight diagonal going back and forth. So the um, this particular file, that's what you would do, right? So 1990, 1990, you know, the number for that particular dot. So it would be really easy to build, you know, a really nice story with a really simple um, structure and a really simple data set. So let's bring that in, uh, and if you look at it, again, it's this one, uh, and it does look like decimals for the minutes and the seconds in the, uh, uh, in, in the data for the latitude and longitude. Um, so... Oh, okay, so let's do the world again, run, and again it's gray, and then we put lines, uh, so this is, yeah, it's just a simple lines command, longitude, latitude, a color for the line, and the line width, I believe, is this command here, All right? So it's going to take each data point and connect it with a line. There we go. Um, so it starts somewhere in the United States and ends up somewhere in France via Argentina, Australia, China, and Russia. Uh, and now we're going to add symbols on top of those lines. Um, and it's quite simple. Background and foreground for the color. Um, it's going to take uh, X and Y again are longitude and latitude. And let's see what happens. And that's pretty nice. And these are big, right? You probably want them a little smaller, but. But still pretty nice, right? That could be your, you know travel around the world, you know, honeymoon, whatever. Reminds me, I didn't have a honeymoon. I still have to go. Uh, <laughs> okay, and then we put text on that, and in this case, it's just going to put the words for my first column, which is stop one, stop two, right? So, right there. Um, I think it stops here, but you could... And in Illustrator, you could easily, you know, fix this up, right? So moving up the stops away from the dots, etc. Um, and just to talk about that for a second, let's look at the, uh, uh, right? So this is not beautiful graphically, but you can fix that. And let's open that file from the New York Times again. If I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Um, and this is perfect here in the PDF version, but if you actually look at the printed version, which I can't show you right now on this screen, you will see that this line, this black line, um, is actually a little bit off. So it's interesting to note, for example, that in 2000, when uh, Bush was elected, oh no, 2000, why is it 2000? I guess they have every two years here. So this is actually include also non-midterm years. In this case, the election of the president, and in 2000, the Senate was exactly split between, um, between Democrats and Republicans, and because Gore did not win, he, was, he went back, he was still in the Senate, and actually, no, was it, was it right before? No, right before, there was exactly 50-50, in which case the vice president uh, who is the 51 or 101 senator can make the difference. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is that in the printed version, this line is actually off and it doesn't neatly cut in those exact points. Um, uh, yeah. But I like how simple um, 
this graph is and how it can tell a story because you can immediately see when it goes to the right it's going to the uh, Republicans right and when it goes to the left it's going to the Dem Democrats the majority that is um, and then again annotations um, and it's Anna Fairfield and someone else uh, Fairfield is the one that done the uh, traffic safety graph um, so um, oh yeah so about you know basically making the graph the best you can you know not all these labels are like next to the dots sometimes they're on top depending like right here okay so those are choices you have to make uh, to make it just about right All right, so I think um, that's it. Just go back to R, make sure we got everything. Um, so once again, this particular uh, graph you can do using the uh, Gantt chart, um, which is more like a project management idea, or kind of a timeline with all kinds of uh, milestones. But anyway, in Tableau, the Gantt chart will allow you to uh, produce this map, this kind of uh, diagram, which is really a scatter plot, right? A map with dots on it is really a scatter plot where the X and the Y are longitude and latitude. It really is the same, same idea, uh, except that with a the map there is a very definite reference, which is you know the geography and, and the reality of the space, whereas in a scatter plot that's about other dimensions, other variables, you know, it could be abstract. Um, okay.